Yo, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of Intuition. In today's video, we're back to answering some Maplex questions. So today we're going to be answering questions about lipidemia. All right, let's dive right into it. Question number one says, a 55 year old male patient was given a statin medication for hyperlipidemia. His initial lipid panel was as follows. HDL level was 38, triglyceride level was 280, and total cholesterol level was 250. His lipid panel now shows the following. His HDL level is now 40, triglyceride level is now down to 220, and total cholesterol is now down to 180. What statin therapy was this patient most likely given? All right, so to me, this question is not as straightforward as many others because, because it's hard to tell what concept is being tested. But the way to figure this problem out is to think about what information we were given. And what we were given were the lipid panels of this patient. What we have to do is we have to compare the initial and the final lipid panel and figure out what type of medication could have caused that difference. You have to use some of your background pharmacy knowledge and you know from studying that certain medications lead to certain reductions in cholesterol level, typically LDL level. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to hone in on the before and after LDL level and then look at the medications that could have caused that reduction in LDL. And that's not gonna be as obvious with this problem because we weren't given the LDL levels. We were given HDL, total cholesterol, and triglyceride but we know the Friedwald's equation. So let's look at the Friedwald's equation and look at the LDL level before and after. So the Friedwald's equation says that the total cholesterol is going to be equal to the HDL level plus the LDL level plus the total triglyceride divided by five. And this equation is valid as long as the total triglyceride level is less than or equal to 400. So we definitely wanna double check that. And we know that for this patient, his triglyceride levels were below 400. So we're free to use this equation. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this equation for the LDL level. And when we do that, we get LDL is equal to total cholesterol minus HDL minus triglyceride divided by five. And now we plug in our numbers for the before. And when we plug in our numbers for the before, we get 250 minus 38 minus 280 divided by five. And when we plug this into our calculator, we get 156 milligrams per deciliter. So this was the patient's initial LDL level before taking the statin medication. Now let's go ahead and calculate his LDL level after taking the medication. And when we plug in those numbers, we get 180 minus 40 minus 220 divided by five. And plugging that into our calculator gives us 96 milligrams per deciliter. So this patient's statin therapy reduced his LDL level from 156 to 96. And now here we appeal to something that we memorized when we studied for our exam. High intensity statin medications, those are going to reduce LDL level by more than 50%. Moderate intensity statin therapy will reduce LDL level by 30 to 50% and low intensity statin therapy reduces LDL level by less than 30%. So we have to look at what the percent drop was in LDL level for this patient. Well, 96 divided by 156 is 0.62 which means that there was a 38% reduction in LDL level for this patient. So that falls into the moderate intensity level and therefore this patient was most likely given a moderate intensity statin. So let's go ahead and look at our answer choices to see which one was a moderate intensity statin. Okay, A says private statin 20 daily, that's low intensity. That's just something you gotta memorize. Crush store 20, now here they're using the name brand for rosuvastatin, but Crush store 20 is a high intensity statin and that's not going to be the answer. And C says a torvastatin 20 milligrams, and that is a moderate intensity statin medication. And that is going to be the answer to this question because choice D is Crestor 40, which is higher than the Crestor 20, which is already a high intensity statin. So D is out as well, and the correct answer is answer choice C, a torvastatin 20 milligrams daily. All right, easy, right? Just gotta remember that equation. All right, let's go on to question number two. All right, so this question says, which of the following factors below would contribute to an increase in a patient's LDL level? Select all that apply. Okay, so when it comes to LDL level, there are different things that can increase LDL level. So LDL level is going to be high when there's a lot of cholesterol in the bloodstream, right? So we have to look at the answer choices that will lead to an increase in cholesterol level or answer choices that are associated with having a high cholesterol level. Answer choice A, obesity. That's a given, right? Definitely obesity leads to higher levels of cholesterol. That's an easy one. The second choice says anorexia. This one, I'm just gonna tell you that this one is correct. And it's not obvious that it is because intuitively you would think that anorexia would lead to lower levels of cholesterol because 
when you're anorexic, you're not really getting much nutritional value. You're not eating much of anything. So why will cholesterol level go up? And I looked into this and all I can find is that studies have shown that there's some genetic predisposition for people who are likely to become anorexic to have high cholesterol level. It's counterintuitive, but it's true. It's counterintuitive points like these that really require very good explanation. So if anybody knows a good explanation, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. Answer choice C says the drug cyclosporin. So this one, this just has to do with you being familiar with certain medications. Cyclosporin, tacrolimus, definitely comes to mind for impacting the, the lipid panel. So these immunosuppressant therapies definitely are definitely going to cause an increase in LDL level. All right, and then we have pregnancy, definitely is going to be associated with LDL. LDL are lipophilic protein that help cells get the cholesterol and the fats that they need. And when you're pregnant, you definitely need a lot of hormones to be able to sustain a fetus. So you're definitely going to see an increase in LDL level during pregnancy. All of these answers are going to be the correct answers, okay? And now we're on to question number three. And question number three says, it has become common knowledge in healthcare that a healthy diet must consist of limited amounts of saturated fats. Select all statements that correctly characterize saturated fats versus unsaturated fats, okay? And the first statement says, saturated fats are more saturated with hydrogens. Yes, that's correct. Saturated fats are long carbon chain molecules that don't have any double bonds and because they don't have any double bonds, they're going to be saturated with hydrogens because the carbon chains are connected to hydrogen atoms, okay? Answer choice B says, unsaturated fats have lower temperature melting points. Yes, that's correct. So one of the best ways to be able to tell a saturated fat from an unsaturated fat is that unsaturated fats are liquid at room temperature and saturated fats tend to be solids at room temperature. Okay, and answer choice C says, saturated fats are more saturated with double bonds. We just talked about that, it's the opposite, right? Saturated fats don't have double bonds, unsaturated fats have the double bonds. And answer choice B says, saturated fats are also known as trans fats. That's not true. Trans fat actually have double bonds, but they have double bonds with a trans configuration, okay? So those are not the same thing. Our correct answers are going to be answer choice A and answer choice B. All right, and there you have it. Let me know if you guys have any questions or any thoughts about the questions that we covered today, or if you have any video requests that you would like me to cover in subsequent videos, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below and start to interact with the channel. You know, get to know me, I'm here to get to know you guys. So don't just watch the video, leave a comment, like the video and share it with someone who would benefit from it. And with that said, I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, take care. Bye-bye.